Welcome back to the Development Book Club. Today we complete Loving Kindness, the book that is at least. We're talking about the last two chapters, which are the power of generosity and living our love, which is about ethical conduct. Power of generosity. So as we continue to build our Pali vocabulary, the word dana is the Pali word for generosity. And the author notes here that the practice of giving deeply influences the feeling tone of our meditation practice and vice versa. They work sort of in a two-way street. In this way, generosity establishes the ground in which our meditation practice can really flourish. And it's really about uh, cultivating a sense of yielding, giving up, letting go, and relinquishing. It's a really nice quote from page 162, which says, if we are always looking for some object, person, or place to create a sense of completing, for ourselves, we miss entirely deg the degree to which we are whole and complete in every moment already. We practice generosity to free our hearts from the delusion of samsara, which is the world of birth and death and coming into being and out of being, so that we can find and enjoy the force of essential happiness. The preeminent or the fundamental aim of dana, generosity, is to free ourselves from the conditioned internal forces of craving clinging and attachment that bind and limit and again narrow our focus and we're not so wide. And the idea here is may you have enough, enough to share. We, and we can ask ourselves, like what do I always you can ask this question, what do I really need right now in this moment in order to be happy? An interesting note about this chapter sort of I guess philosophically is that generosity I've always thought that people would think it's good because we're supposed to, you know, support the interests or the needs of other people. However, here, the sort of aim of it is really for yourself, to rid yourself from the delusion of samsara or of suffering for your own self and clinging and has narrow set. Not so much, they don't really talk, she doesn't really talk very much about, you know, giving, bringing happiness to others by giving to them, for example, which is not wrong, just not what I was expecting. Chapter 11 is the final chapter of the book called Living Our Love. And there's a very good chapter to talk about integration a lot in terms of meditation practice with other aspects of Buddhism. This is the key integration to what the final poly word of this book is sila, or ethical conduct. And this is mentioned a lot in the Eightfold Path, which is outside the scope of this book, but just ethical conduct. The Buddha taught that moral conduct is the source of true beauty. So sila traditionally rests on five commitments for lay Buddhists. So this is like not for monks, monastics, but for people like you and I. Number one, to refrain from killing or physical violence. Number two, to refrain from stealing or taking that which is not given. Three, to refrain from sexual misconduct or using our sexual energy that, in a way that causes harm. Number four, to refrain from lying, harsh speech, idle speech and from slander. And number five is to refrain from taking intoxicants that could cloud the mind and cause heedlessness. There's a lot of talk of karma here. And one thing, there's a metaphor of our actions is that like a seed, they say, and that karma is not this rigidly deterministic, but rather it think of how the field in which a seed grows impacts the way that seed grows, and seed really needs a field. There are very few seeds that can grow without soil. And that is loving kindness. So to sort of sum up, it wasn't exactly what I was expecting. I was expecting more on the, um, the kindness part of loving kindness. And she really focused more on the, the loving aspect, and clearly there's a connection there. Uh, it's affected my meditation practice, which is cool because of the, the sort of mantras that they have to incorporate into meditation and sort of to contextualize it within the larger scope of the four Brahma Viharas, along with sympathetic joy, compassion, and equanimity. And thanks for watching.